Hi, and welcome to Vista 5. I'm your host, Ian Mackley, and I'll be walking you through the card's interface process. Before watching this video, I recommend watching the tutorials on creating your card issuer and card holders, and if you're using the EP Petty Cash card, the tutorials for VPO as well. This process breaks down into three steps. Advancing and reimbursing cards, receiving transactions and files, and accounting for the transactions within those files. We'll save advances for the end of this tutorial and begin with receiving your transactions. There are three steps that need to be completed before receiving your files into V5. Creating your card issuer, your card holders, and completing the work necessary to create your transaction files. Your transaction files will be created through EP's VPO if you're using the EP Petty Cash card. If you are using another type of card, like American Express, you'll need to talk to your key accountant to complete this step. Upon creating your transaction file, go to the Card Receive window in V5. This is where you go to initially import your files to determine whether they are acceptable for processing or should be disputed due to something like a fraudulent charge. Firstly, fill out the company, currency, year period, and card issuer. Click on the ellipsis to search for your transaction file or files on your computer. Once you've found them, click Load. At this point, you will see the grid to the right populate with the file's info and total amount. Now, over in the grid, you can choose to dispute the entire file if, for example, you have created the file in VPO to be comprised entirely of fraudulent charges. Now that you have loaded your files into V5, create a card receive number, sort of like a batch ID, enter the receive date, likely today's date, the source code should default to RC, and lastly, enter a description. Once you have brought in your transaction files, it's a good idea to run an audit before posting. In the audit window, you can run a report summary and even by card. And like all audit windows, checking the historical report checkbox will run a report of all posted files. From here, it may be good to run the receipt listing report which functions similarly to a real envelope. It provides a card-by-card -card breakdown of each transaction's amount and detail. Now that you've determined whether the transaction files are fraudulent or not, you can begin creating your envelopes. In Card Envelope, select the card holder and their card account number and give the envelope a number, date, and description. For tracking spent envelopes, Enter the total of the envelope in the Accounted For field. The Advance Amount field is specifically for advances and reimbursements. We'll talk about those later. Once you're ready to bring in some transactions, click Get More Card Transactions. This will give you a list of every individual transaction that came in the card files we previously discussed. This window allows you to cherry pick the desired transactions for this particular envelope. From here, you can make last minute changes to areas like amount, description, and even the coding. You can split these rows in order to code to different accounts, and you can even relieve POs here. Note that if you bring in a PO to be relieved, it will override the distribution, but not the amount from the card file. That card amount has already been spent, and therefore it is unchangeable. So the PO amount will concede to the card's amount. See our other tutorial videos for a further look into relieving POs as well as splitting lines. If an individual charge needs to be disputed, you can check this box here. Upon posting, the charges will be posted to the disputed charges account as designated by the card issuer and vendor entry. And a quick reminder, the card receive process allows you to post entire transaction files to the disputed card account, while within the card envelope window, you can post individual charges to the disputed charges account. How these dollars will be dealt with is between you and your bank since it is most likely that these are fraudulent charges. Now let's talk about advances. If you want to reimburse the cardholder's amount, you can do so as a separate transaction or even within the envelopes accounted for transaction as well. Upon entering the advanced amount, the advance reimburse options opens up to the right. You can advance by check, card transfer, or card offset. 
If by check is selected, posting the transaction will create an open item for the payment section. The check will be made out to your card issuer. Card transfer allows you to move money from another card's account upon posting. Lastly, posting with the card offset account selected will create an account likely to be designated by your studio that reflects their provision of petty cash. No need to discuss auditing and posting again, but of course you will need to go through these steps in order to complete the card envelope process. Also, if you are conducting your initial advance to your card issuer, like American Express or EP Petty Cash Card, you will simply go straight to the card envelope window, choose the card holder getting the advance, fill out the amount advanced, likely choose to pay by check, audit, and post, and cut the check under payments. Again, the check will be cut to your card issuer, like American Express or EP Petty Cash Card, not to the card holder. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call EP Product Support at 818-955-6300 or email us at products at entertainmentpartners.com. Thanks for watching.